Today we're going to be working on a Lexus 2012 LS460. Uh, we're going to be removing the radio uh, down here and the display. We'll also have to remove the center panel here. Alright, so the first step is going to be taking off these two side covers here. You're going to have to pull from the far side, so just pull straight towards you. So those come off horizontally like this, all the way down to right here. And then these actually pull away from you, so they go this way. And here's what those look like. So these are all the ones that we're pulling straight off. And then these ones at the back right here are going to be the ones that you have to pull this way. So then we'll do the same thing on this side. Now that we got the side ones loose, we pull up, and there's that panel. Once you've got those loose, you can go ahead and take off the shifter knob. Alright, and this needs to turn counterclockwise. Once it's loose, you can just kind of spin it to get it fully off. Now, that's up, now that that's off, we have a piece back here that we also need to pull off. It's a tiny piece of trim. You can just pull up on either corner. That's what that looks like on the bottom. And now that's done, we have two 10 millimeters on the side we need to take out. Now that we have those loose, this will pull out. Now that we've got that loose, we can go through here and unplug all this, or you can just set it to the side. And next, we just have to pull out this piece. To do that, we're going to actually push down the shift lock here, get a release. Pull the shifter back and then just simply pull on either side of this. It'll come loose. Oh, like that. And then there's going to be this one plug on the bottom. And that's the plug there. You just need to squeeze down on this release. And now we're undoing the bolt. It's going to be right up here. And the hole that you go into is right here. And this is the bolt we pulled out of there. And then we'll go to the other side, do the same thing. We've got this one out. All right, so now we're ready to pull out the radio. We're gonna use our pry tool here. And you can pry up top, but there's actually two clips down here. So it's better to just pry on these down here. And just be careful, because this wood grain can crack. But as long as you pry along the bottom, you should get it to pop out. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out. And now we're just gonna disconnect everything back here so we can get the radio out of the way. And now that we've got that removed, we can go ahead and move to the display. And there's going to be two 8mm uh, and Phillips heads. They're going to be right up here, about behind this. There's going to be one on either side, so we're going to take those out. Alright, and then we can go ahead and start pulling this out. Pulling the two lower corners down here, it's a lot easier. And now you don't just want to pull from the bottom, we do need to get the top clips out. Alright, so as you can see, I'm pulling on the bottom, but I'm also pulling a little bit on the top. I'm not trying to pry up here, I'm more or less just trying to get a grasp on the trim and pulling with it. Alright, so I'm going to start unplugging everything back here. Alright, so on these top plugs up here, they are attached to the actual metal here. And for that, you just need to push in these two little clips on this brown pin. In some cases, it is easier to use a pry tool to kind of get the leverage on them. So I'm going to be doing that. There we go. We got one side through. There we go. Now we can go ahead and pull this out. All right, so we're going to be mounting it in the glove box. We're actually going to put it on top of this little flat area here. So what you need to do is lift up on this from the middle, pop this out, and then you can just pull directly out So you get the shelf loose. From there, we're actually going to be running our wires through this. We're just going to do a notch at the top so we can run the wires through and go to here. So to get this off, you just pull up, and then it comes right out. When you put it back in, you're just going to slide it back in. And then there's actually a side panel right here. You're going to need a pry tool for this, but you can see there's a little gap right here. You just want to get your pry tool in there, and then pull off. And this is how that sits in there. It's got two clips, and this is the area that we pried. And this is the retention part that holds it in right here. So it goes in, and the clips are up top and up bottom. Once you've got that loose, it's really easy to run your wires, because you can access this from this side. You just push the wire through, and you'll be able to fish it through to yourself. 
And then once you get it to here, you can pass it up to this area, right around this corner. And so we're gonna do that real quick and we'll show you. All right, so the hole that we opened up in here actually leads directly down to this area. So I'll show you that. Run the wire down here. And then I'm pulling it through over here. Super simple to run your wires this way, and as you can see, there's like no resistance. It just goes directly through. We're gonna do the same thing with our video cable here, GVMF. All right, so we've got our cables on this side, and then of course we have the ones in the glove box. And we're just gonna use these to connect to the factory radio and to the factory plugs. Uh, we've got the video harness here, the GVMF. This one will get connected to the factory GVMF. Looks just like this, they fit together. Uh, the factory one will go in here and this will go into the back of the radio. This radio actually didn't have a factory GVMF connector so this will just be unplugged, disconnected from anything and the side will go into the display. So we show you that when we reassemble everything. This side here, you've only got one female plug and that's actually gonna go to this 12 pin right here. And then these two right here will be going into the radio. Now that we've got those connected, we're just gonna do some zip tying to cable manage this and then we'll come back. All right, so we're ready to put back in the display. Well, we've got our three cables here that are from our V-Line. So we're gonna go ahead and plug those in. Goes there. This one goes up here. And this one right here. And now from here, we're ready to just go ahead and connect everything back factory behind here. Go ahead and start connecting those. And the biggest thing on the back here is you just want to make sure you get all the plugs. You don't want to miss anything back here. And this should be our final one. Alright, and now we're at the final last part here. We're just going to make all our connections at the top of the display. And we're going to put the brown clip back in. So it's all our connections for the display. And we're not gonna pop it all the way in, we're just gonna make sure we get all of our connections straight, make sure the radio's working with the V-Lite, and then from there we'll go through and push everything back in. All right, so now we're gonna hook back up the radio. All right, so now we've got all that slid in place, we're ready to go ahead and test. So we're gonna plug in our V-Lite and then we'll be back. All right, so we've hooked everything up. We've tested, uh, it's appearing under the USB source here. And there we go. So it came up, we do have audio. Uh, we've tested the backup camera, make sure that's working. Go. All right, so we've gone ahead and started pulling all the radio back out. There we go, so we've got all those harnesses loose. And now that we've done that, we're ready to slide this back into place. And you're just going to make sure everything lines up. Just push it on all four corners. And that's in place. And next, we're going to put our 8mm slash Phillips heads back in. There we go. And now that we've got that back in, we'll go ahead and put our radio back. Pay attention to your clips, make sure they all go in in each four corner. And from there, we're going to need this right here. And the plug is actually on the bottom, so make sure you get it oriented correctly. And then our two clips are on either side. There we go. And then lastly, we'll be putting this back into place. And then for the shifter, whenever you're sliding the shifter knob back through, just make sure you line up the hole here with what position it's in if you have moved the shifter knob. And then you might have to open the center console. And that slides back in place. And we'll come back and do all the 10 millimeters. So we've got that one in there. All right, so then you'll be putting in this 10 millimeter up here again. And once you've done that, we've got these two right here left. And these are gonna be the two that are screws instead of bolts. 
Alright, now that we've got those in, just got to put on the shifter here. And then we'll put on the side panel right here as well. And with this, make sure you put in the back side first, these parts. And then we'll go to the next side. Alright, so we'll be putting on this side next. That's right here. Again, make sure you get in the side first. Alright, we have that side on. And then the final piece will be this right here, which is just going to clip right back in in the middle.